employees with higher self-esteem and self-confidence tend to take more risk, take more initiative to solve problems on their own, and are less resistant to change. I'll talk about how to increase employee self-esteem and self-confidence in this video. Hello, I'm Steven Goldberg of Optimus Performance, and we work with business owners and leaders to develop self-motivated and highly productive employees and salespeople. Subscribe to our channel to get news of new videos as they come out. One of the topics of a recent video was about having employees being more creative so that they could contribute to continuous improvement and problem solving. I talked about three main things that a leader can do to influence people to become more creative and solve problems on their own. And one of them was about self-esteem and self-confidence. And what I mean by that and, and how to increase employee self-esteem and self-confidence is through feedback. Now, the most common form of feedback, unfortunately, is negative feedback. We tend to see what people are not doing well and want to correct it to get them back on track. However, there needs to be a balance between positive and negative feedback because too much negative feedback can lower somebody's motivation and affect their self-confidence and self-esteem as they, they, they never know when they're doing something right. So we need to have a balance. When you give positive feedback on a regular basis, that opens up the door to give negative feedback. Now negative feedback should be in the form of constructive criticism. But if that's all you're giving, the employee just starts to feel like, well, I'm not doing well, uh, you know, what's wrong with me? And especially people that start off with maybe not such high self-esteem. And that's very common today. We've been conditioned maybe to think negatively about ourselves, and we have to work through that. So as an employer, that can be an impediment to having people take action, to take more initiative, because they're afraid to do the wrong thing. Now, the way to counter that is through positive feedback. Now, there's different ways to give positive feedback. You could say, uh, recognize somebody for a good job and just say good work, good effort, that type of thing. And, and that's okay. But you want to be more explicit because then it has more impact on the employee and you want to point out certain behaviors or skills that the employee used to produce a certain result. For example, if somebody produces a great report or a good report, uh, you want to say, not just say, well, great report, uh, thanks for doing that, but, but what made that report great? Well, you went into great detail uh, in, in that report, you obviously researched very well, and it shows your ability and your strength in research and also uh, your, your attention to detail. So that's great. What that does, it, it touches more the person in terms of really connecting with one of their strengths or some of their strength and it makes them feel good. And not only that, it just reinforces that notion that they are doing things well and that they do have the skills to do even better. So it'll give them the confidence and the self-esteem to take more initiative and do more on their own. And that's really what you want to bring out in the person because as an organization grows, obviously you want to delegate more responsibility. And the more that people have the openness to change and to take on more things, the better you're able, going to be able to delegate more responsibility and more uh, difficult tasks perhaps and stretch that person a little bit. One thing to do to put this into practice is to start observing what are people doing well. You know, we have to retrain our thinking. If, if we've been giving too much negative feedback or we haven't been pointing out the positives, we want to start recognizing it and taking notes. What are people doing well? Then how can I give them feedback using the guidelines I, I just gave as an example? So focus on, on the skills, the behavior, touch the person, let them know what they're doing well and, and what their strengths are. Now at first it may seem a bit wooden or uh, unnatural because it's not something that maybe you've been doing all the time, but that'll pass. Anything new that you start putting into practice seems uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, you won't have to think about it. It'll just become a natural part of your leadership style and will really make you a better leader and build trust with your employees. 
So I encourage you to put this into practice, make it a habit, subscribe to our channel, and let us know how it's been working out for you. Thank you for listening and talk soon.